Well, I'm quite sure that you've already often heard that it is not a good idea to drink uh, concentrated salt water or marine water, seawater. But, but, but why not? Well, we're going to find out today because I'm going to be adding a little bit of salt water to red blood cells. These are the ones that you see in the background here. Um, also to paramecia, which are single-celled microorganisms, and also to onion cells. And all of these cells, they don't like salt water at all. Well, hello and welcome, microbe hunter here. Yeah, and that's basically, these are my red blood cells that you see. And you see that they're very nice and round, but not very much longer because uh, I'm going to add a little bit of salt water to my red blood cells and after just a couple of seconds look how they look like they completely lost uh, their nice and round shape and they started to shrivel up and shrink and uh, they're, they're completely irregular and, and they look pretty ugly I think yeah and, and, and then basically that's what happens um, and that's one of the reasons why you should not be drinking salt water because I do not want this to happen um, to my red blood cells in my body right um, because what happens well the salt water that surrounds the, the cells um, will pull out the water from inside of the cell. So that's called um, osmosis. And uh, the water will move uh, from inside the red blood cells. It will move out and uh, this causes the, the contents of, of the cell to shrink. And then basically it starts to shrivel up because yeah, it's much uh, smaller now. Yeah, And then you have got the cell membrane on the outside, which kind of uh, goes into folds and, 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 and so on. And that's why they have these, uh, these ir irregular shaped uh, st uh, structures. Yeah. And of course, uh, the same thing can also be done with other cells. Uh, well, here again, you see the nice red blood cells and is still intact. But uh, of course, the same thing can also be done to those uh, little um, yeah, paramecia. These are single cell uh, microbes, uh, protists. They are, um, they're actually fairly large and uh, they swim around. Uh, they're uh, freshwater organisms. And uh, freshwater means uh, that they don't like salt. But <laughs> yeah, I added some salt here as well. And uh, I observed what they're actually doing. Well, here they're still uh, moving around more or less happily, um, looking for food and, and, and reproducing producing and then here I already added a little bit of salt and they don't like it they started to move away from the salt um, but sooner or later um, they're surrounded by the salt water and and then look what happens look carefully they start to become thinner and thinner and thinner because they lose water as well and this kind of causes them to collapse and then they die. <laughs> That's it. Okay. They stop moving. Um, and uh, because, uh, yeah, not only due to the loss of water, but I can imagine that also the salt itself causes quite a uh, few problems uh, with the cells, probably also messing up some other metabolic uh, pathways inside the cells. And yeah, there is no possibility to revive them. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's it. So yeah, as you can see, um, the microorganisms, uh, they need their appropriate surrounding and uh, those freshwater microbes, they don't like uh, to be in salt water at all. Yeah. Um, however, I mean, in the Dead Sea, for example, which is extremely concentrated, they did find microorganisms that are able to survive that area as well. So they're used to the high salt concentration, but not, not, not those paramecia here. And then last but not least, uh, these are red onions cells here. Um, and here I too added a little bit of salt water and look what happens. Uh, the contents of the cell starts to shrink and I used red onion because you, you see it much better and because of the red pigment. And look what happens. I mean, yeah, the, the contents, the, the cytoplasm, the, it starts to shrink uh, because it too started to lose water by osmosis. And, and this process can, as a matter of fact, also be reversed if you add again some fresh tap water and you flush away and you clean away all of the salt and the whole process is going to be reversed. If you're interested in, in observing this, I, um, there's a link uh, um, to another video that I made at the end of this uh, at the end of this video here. Look look what happens here again. It starts to shrink, and then the contents of the cell starts to become a little bit darker. Um, because the pigment becomes more concentrated. Here again, here zoomed in quite a bit. And you can see that the, the, the outside, the cell wall, the overall uh, shape of the cell is, is still intact, but it's actually only the contents that starts to shrink here. In the case of the paramecia and the red blood cells, this was quite different. The whole cell started to collapse because they did not have a strong cell wall around it. But onions, believe it or not, they are plants. Onions are plants, obviously, and they have a cell wall, which is kind of strong. And that's why um, this cell wall remains intact. And it's only the inside um, that, that starts uh, to collapse due to the lack, uh, lack of, uh, of water, which has been kind of pulled out from the cell. Yeah, so that's uh, quite, uh, quite an interesting and also easy experiment to do. And if you want to um, see how I've done that and how you can also do the same experiment and also even reverse it, uh, there is a video here that I made some time ago where even the onion cells are popping yeah, and spilling out the contents even. Well, but uh, for today, that's all I want to share with you. I wish you all the best. A happy micro hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye-bye.